Remove the lifelines. Eliminate plans B, C, and D. Let the curtains close and the lights dim. See, the beginning of something new requires the ending of something current. So make life propel you into chapter two. Let the door slam and lock behind you. Throw away the key. With the boats burned and turning back off the table, we have to make it work. We have to figure it out. Well, how, we might ask, with only these pieces, with only this circumstance, with only these resources. Well, it's funny how when walking away is no longer a possibility, so many other possibilities are born. When we're stuck between the wall and our demons, we roll up our sleeves and do that which we have been, let's face it, running from. We fight. We become proactive. We take initiative. It was always there. We just never had to. So if you can't do it on your own, make life make you. Because the bottom line is there are new horizons that await your arrival. They are always there. But they require you to make the trip to look out over the vastness of what's before you and convince yourself that what's ahead can become your new normal. And oh, how I wish we weren't biologically preconditioned to preserve, to stay safe, to stay the same. How I wish we weren't constantly being pulled to stay right where we are. Our minds, they love it here. With the rest of the world, the change, the hope, the progress, all on the other side of that window, all outside, all foreign to us. You don't need any of that, it'll tell you. Or maybe after you conjure up a little courage, it might compromise. It might say, fine, it's worth a try. Put one foot out the door, but don't forget, you can always come back to me. You can always retreat. It's warm here, safe, here. It's predictable here. The mind wants you to know that when things get tough, mediocrity and comfort are always right behind you, ready to embrace you with open arms. And it's for this reason that those boats must be burned, that the door must be locked, and that chapter must be closed. The journey before you, it's going to be difficult. There's no question about that. Anything of value brings difficulty. And when faced with the adversity, the only way to defeat it is to know there is only one way, one option available to you. And that one option is forward. It's through. There is no backwards or compromise. There is no safety. Not if you want from life that which is extraordinary. Not if you want the things we covet, dream of. Whether they're interpersonal, financial, career-oriented, health-related, maybe you just know in your soul that right now ain't it. Any move to something better will present to you its obstacles. And my advice, if it's what you really want, is to have decided before you started that there is no other way. There's no negotiating with yourself. Because if you allow that door to be cracked, life will kick it open. So point the compass north and dismiss any notion that what's comfortable is more important than what's meaningful. When you're cold, nothing is more appealing than that warmth. But warmth is deception, a short-term ploy for you to forget what really matters, an illusion. See, cold subsides, but victory is forever. Knowing that you pushed forward when most wouldn't is forever. Transforming potential into strength when your knees shook is forever. 
so burn the boats for no other reason that there is no way forward so long as there remains a way back. Make life make you win. And where most would look around and see evidence of defeat, you'll find again and again in the same quote unquote evidence, the tools to build ladders to new beginnings and bridges to new worlds. There's a saying that I love, that most of life's successful people were too ignorant of the odds to know their accomplishments were considered at one point impossible. And I love it because it highlights that there was never a, a fallback option, a concern for the statistics. There was no worry or exhausted energy on what if, rather it was constant building and adjusting finding ways over, through, and around the walls that inevitably stand before us. There was no way home, so they pushed forward into their greatness. And so can you, whatever shape, form, or color greatness looks like in your eyes, whatever mountaintop appeals to you, if you want it, if you're willing to decide before you go, that you will one day stand amongst the clouds, peering out at that world you deemed wasn't against you, but for you. Anything is possible. There was a point a handful of years back where I had one of the most important breakthroughs of my lifetime. And I've talked about this with people close to me, family and friends, to you know, clients, business associates, and it seems like there's a commonality amongst all of us. And maybe, depending on the person, it happened in a different way, certainly at different times. But everyone, at one point or another, comes face to face with the realization that they have a tremendous amount of control over their lives. And it's at that moment, you know, where one becomes empowered. It's like you realize you have the key to the cell you've been locked in this whole time. And at that moment, one is prompted to ask, well, why not start living like it? You know, there will always be responsibility and sacrifice in life. But that awareness makes one ask, well, what am I sacrificing for? Where am I going? Am I spending time with people that lift me up? Am I doing things that contribute to a greater vision? And perhaps most importantly, am I even living a life that is true to myself? Because I'll tell you something, our time here flies by. Not only will next month, next year, next decade be here before you know it, but it's not even guaranteed. And if one doesn't take the time to look in the mirror and ask the tough questions, Life will keep on ticking. Time will not stop. No one's going to walk up to you and point out the fact that you're just going through the motions here. No, that one's on you. You have to see that this world can become what you decide it will be. That you are presented the tools, but tools require an architect and a creator. Tools require someone in seeing what is not yet there to pick them up and build. And so maybe this is the time for you to ask, what am I building? Where am I going? And when my day starts, both feet hit the ground and I walk out the door, what am I moving towards? Maybe today is the day you realize that there are parts of your life that don't need to be there, that you can cut away. People that don't deserve your time, that don't elevate you or contribute to your well-being. Maybe there are 
places you're going because that's where you've always gone. Things you're doing because that's what you've always done. But you don't need to live life on repeat. If you're not happy about it, how about doing something to change it? There is nothing in your life that can't be adjusted or altered. Just like yesterday is now a story, so is the idea that you are confined to a specific set of parameters. Break down those walls. See things not as they are, but as they can be if you have the courage to walk away from old stories and characters. What if today you created a new ending? One that lights you up in the morning, contributes to your sense of purpose when you close your eyes at night. Again, remember, no one will come up and hand that to you. No one will let you know you're selling yourself short. That transformation must be internally prompted. And so I hope you'll ask. I hope you'll ask the questions that you've been neglecting for far too long. I hope today can be the first page in an entirely new chapter. A chapter in a story that is truly and entirely yours. Stop apologizing. Stop apologizing for who you are, what you believe, and how you see the world. Stop apologizing for your failures. They lift you up. They push you to be more. Stop apologizing for being different, unusual, or unique. There's a saying that if you are lucky enough to be different, don't ever change. Embrace that. Hold it. Stop apologizing for taking a path less traveled, for breaking away from the pack. It's not an insufficiency. It doesn't mean you couldn't go their way. It means you have the courage to be yourself in a world trying to make you someone else. Stop apologizing for words that don't align with someone else's ideology or worldview. Your job isn't to appease or conform. It's to grab hold of what lights a fire in you and use it to brighten the world around you. Stop apologizing for your dreams. It's okay to not be content where you are. It's okay to want to grow, to become more, the roots planting them to the ground, they are not yours. And why waste the opportunity beyond the horizon of your current existence? See, having the courage of your convictions is like unlocking your mind. Realizing that, yeah, you have the key and you've had it all along. No one else gets to set your parameters. They don't get to tell you what's right or what to believe. The people around you are not moral arbiters. They're not protectors of truth. Remember that. Remember that no one knows better than you what's best for you. That's why there's power in intuition, in following your beliefs, your strengths, in doing what makes you happy, relentlessly pursuing what makes you feel alive. The thing about dreams, ideas, potential, they're always meaningless until they're not. See, everything is crazy until it exists. So protect it. Don't bow down to, to pressures of now simply because you have not yet built tomorrow. You will. If you want it, you will. Some messages, they are incredibly simple, and this, my friends, is one of those. 
You have everything you need to become who you want to be. Right now, as you listen to this in real time, you don't need approval or permission or acceptance. You don't need to belong or be told it's normal. You simply need to start to know that you will pick yourself up when you fall and keep going. Not apologize, but continue placing one foot in front of the other. Not look externally for a will to carry on that only exists within you. See, the second you begin rewriting the rules, changing the game, you put yourself in position to emerge victorious. Sometimes the inspiration doesn't come to you. No, sometimes you have to go out and find it. When it hurts the most, when the deck seems stacked against you, when the road to travel seems to be longer than you can endure. These are the times we're tasked not with waiting but with creating. And those lows, they become highs because they force us to self-assess, to look around and say, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I'm done tolerating X, accepting Y, associating with Z, and so a bridge must be created to something. And your question is simply, what's that something going to look like? Here's what's interesting. Knowing what you don't want is often the beginning. It breathes life into a first step. Maybe you look up and you have no idea what step 2000 or 3000 looks like, and that's perfectly okay. You don't need to know exactly where you're headed, exactly what the top of the mountain will look like. What took me forever to figure out is knowing that here isn't right for you, wherever here is, is enough. Because it is the beginning, the engine that makes it all work. You don't owe explanations, apologies aren't required of you. All you needed was that feeling in your stomach that more is out there and perhaps you've been depriving yourself of it for a tad too long. You just need to leave scarcity behind and train your eyes to find the abundance you exist within. The other day I saw a quick interview Tiger Woods was giving. And I'm not really a big golf guy, but when the greats talk, I listen. And those who have been following him know that he's had kind of a rocky past, right? A very public, uh, you know, family situation to injuries, surgeries, a recent car accident. And you can only want someone like that to rise from the ashes, right? I feel like everyone's rooting for him to rediscover the dominance he once possessed. And basically, in this interview, the interviewer is asking him about day one of the Masters, where Tiger played well enough to make the cut. You know, he survived day one and was about to continue uh, the, the tournament into the weekend, but it certainly wasn't the best golf he's ever played. And so upon reflecting on it, he says, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, things aren't the way I'd like them to feel, but I've given myself a chance. And I love the way that sounded, right? Not just because it came from a man who's been metaphorically battling uphill for what feels like some time now, but because it's how we all reemerge from our adversity. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Your past, all of it, the ups and downs, the bumps and bruises, They've all brought you here. 
And if life is one giant tournament, you've made the cut. You get to play in your masters. Tomorrow is coming. And it brings with it the chance to right the ship. To discover the undiscovered, to find yourself again. By showing up today, you've given yourself a chance and that is the most powerful thing one can possess, a chance. I think too often we look at what we don't have. We spend our time focusing on the holes, the blank spaces, the gaps. Instead of looking at the opportunity we've created to pivot wherever we deem necessary. The flexibility is the asset, but only valuable when we recognize and utilize it. And yeah, that can feel like a tall order when we are not at our best. When we're operating at a level that, let's say, is less than ideal. It's easy to see all the problems we're going through as supporting evidence that the world is bigger than us, that we are outmatched by life. But really, all these things that have come together to create our current state, they're nothing more than life providing you a chance, an opportunity to turn the page. I'm a tiger. You know, those lows, those setbacks, and perhaps even the personal anguish one would assume would uh, accompany those things. They've given him the gift of now, and he recognizes that. Just like everything that has paved the way for you has done the same. It's created the conditions from which you can now grow, further evolve providing a little nudge towards those things we need to do, but maybe sometimes drag our feet a little too long. So when the world throws you curveballs, how about seeing the situation as a chance to hit off speed, to step up to the plate and make something of what we thought was misfortune? When one trades, it's happening to me, for it's happening for me, you're presented advantages that were previously unavailable. They weren't there. And not because they didn't exist. They weren't there because they weren't recognized. Because perhaps you saw the very thing that could help you as the thing that would hurt you. But regardless, here you are, sharpened by the mistakes you made and shaped by the lessons you learned. You are here, not to relive the past, but to create a new reality, write a new chapter, walk a new path. You are here. And wherever next happens to be, let it unfold because you chose it. Let it evolve because it's who you are. Leave the stands and make your way to the stage where sure the stakes are higher, but so is the upside. I often talk about the power of looking over our shoulders at those highs and lows from time to time. Not because they have power over us, but because they have made us powerful. Look at all you've endured. See all that you've overcome and for what? Well, to put it simply, for the gift currently at your fingertips. The chance to say years from now that sure you lost yourself. Things became chaotic, confusing, convoluted. Maybe you were unsure. Maybe at times you even felt alone. But those times, 
the same times that could have kept you down, instead reminded you what you were capable of becoming. You don't get the light at the end of the tunnel without walking through the darkness. And so to remember that, that all this has unfolded to bring about something beautiful on the other side, well, that just might be the perspective that you've needed, that you've left behind. The world will only give you what you ask for. And so right here, right now, instead of accepting a continuation of your past, how about demanding an evolution of yourself? That game of life awaits. And so for your sake and the world's, don't be afraid to play. When you look at erosion, I like, say, dunes on a beach. What you see is something giving itself away, little by little, deteriorating. Sure, there will be events that expedite the process, but generally speaking, it's lost a little bit at a time, day by day, right in front of our eyes. Until the time comes when we realize that what we have is no longer recognizable. It's sort of redefined. And I think in a lot of ways, we find ourselves in a similar situation. The concessions we allow every day slowly redefine who we are. You know, when it doesn't seem like much, that's the thing, it never does. Quietly detaching from what you believe, taking on an identity that doesn't quite align with who you are, doing things, being places that causes something in your gut to protest, toning down the color in your life so that you blend in. Right? These are not epic, monumental decisions. It's the drawn out erosion of what makes you who you are. It's the chipping away of what makes you spectacular. See, the idea that now isn't permanent, so I'll just suck it up now. What's the big deal? I'll just settle for now. Let me tell you, if that's your rationale, you're forgetting how easily tomorrow becomes never and now becomes forever. We operate under an illusion that things will become easier that change will be less strenuous down the road. We'll make things right, get back on track, be happy then, but the harsh reality is that things don't get easier than they are at the present moment. It's quite the opposite. And to disregard or ignore this is to let yourself wither away at the hands of procrastination. If you're planning to wait for that, get comfortable. And see, conceding day in and day out, it alters your understanding of who you are and what you're capable of. Our actions reinforce our beliefs. Imagine a straight line, a simple straight line drawn on a piece of paper, right? You're in the middle. And on one end is who you are, in your heart, in your soul, and on the other end is everything you're not. Every time you sacrifice your principle, your beliefs, Every time you say, that's not me, but fine. That's not where I want to be, but okay, it's only temporary. You take a little step toward what you're not. And another step, and another step. And one day you look in the mirror and you have no clue who's looking back at you. Because you've conceded one small decision at a time. You've given away your sense of purpose. Sure, the situation is difficult. But the best things in life are the things that are not easy. 
You have to fight for those things. You have to stand up in the face of struggle, adversity, the narrative that others want to write for you. We stay within guidelines because we think the outside is scary. No, what's inside is scary. What's outside is what you need. And when you stop banking on the anticipated miracles of tomorrow and manage the reality of today, you succeed. It's life's greatest test. Are you brave enough to be you? Are you strong enough to fight back when you're tempted to hide, to blend in? Every time you summon the courage to stay true to yourself, it gets easier. The difficulty lessens. You become free of the mental chains you've placed around your ankles. There are certain things in life worthy of compromise. But your identity, your journey, what makes you feel alive, that is sacred ground. That is worth defending until your last breath. No one can take that because it's yours. And when you look back on your life and the amazing people in it, a life lived fully will always supersede marching through your days wearing a mask and following someone else's agenda. It's your life. It's your gift, live it.